The most important conversation you will ever have is the one you have with yourself. So I slowly started changing that internal dialogue in my head. And that was where the power came from. The power came from no one's helping me. No one's coming back to save me. No one's coming back to pull me to the finish line. This is on you. So I saw a lot of power in the fact that if I change this around, I, I did this. I changed this around. Secret to success, there's a system to success. And no matter what organization you become a part of, the system works if you work it. If you don't work it, it won't work. But it works if you work it. And that's one four letter word that most people don't like. They're not willing to work. Go in there hoping it doesn't happen. Why? Because they don't want to do the work. It's an aversion to most people's spirit. Is that, you know, we are more than what we're demonstrating, that we've been sold this lie that people are taught through school. And the truth is, everyone can do this too, and so much more. Apply towards creativity and focus and flow and problem solving and, and thinking and, 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 and really to overcoming the biggest challenges of their life and maybe even the, the world. The challenge is we were taught a lie. We were taught a lie that somehow our intelligence, our potential, our learning, our memory somehow is fixed, our creativity is fixed, our thinking is fixed like our shoe size. This is about transcending. You know, this is about ending the trance, ending the trance that, you're, that we're not good enough, you know, that we're not smart enough, that we, we're not this genius, and telling the truth. And the, and the truth is, people, can, we're faster and we're smarter than we think. And not just to be able to rote and memorize things, but be able to really solve significant challenges, and maybe that these challenges that we're going through are the lessons that we need to, to learn the most. And then some people who learn those lessons feel compelled to be able to share that voice with other people. So it's not just one candle, you know, we just can set things ablaze. You gotta rise up. You gotta make your dreams a reality and live a damn masterpiece. You know this. Now, here's the thing, a couple things. You gotta make a decision. Listen to me, you gotta make a decision. What's the decision? What's the thing you came here for? Now we're at the moment, the clock is ticking. People say all the time, hey, life is short. Let me tell you something. Life can be long. You bury your dreams, you quit this, life gets long. See, time's relative. Two minutes of you being with your sweetie, doing whatever you like to do with them, that can go by quick, right? What's about the last two minutes on a treadmill? Does that not seem like it goes by for like four hours, right? So if you're enjoying it, it's short. If it's painful, it's long. Life can be long. What happens when you screw up your intrinsic motivation? What half, right? When you're not, when you're not living with passion, purpose, regular access to flow, all of the things that the Susan of the Art of Most Possible is, are about the tools that I've worked breaking down. When you use them right, the result is Superman. When you use them wrong or don't use them at all, if you're not using the organism the way the organism is designed to be used, the result is anxiety and depression. And we're in the middle of the largest anxiety and depression kind of epidemic in the history of the world. So. There's, it strikes me that there's a correlation here. thought that I love which says, you know who you are when no one's watching. Like what you do when no one's watching, that's who you are. You know when you're alone what you choose. And I think that that really helps you overcome your ego because when we reflect on ourselves when no one's around, that's when we're truly uncovering who we are. Are tired of feeling negative. You feel often that your own thoughts are the things that trip you up in life, that you wish that your mind were more positive. And what it means to be human is that your brain and your body want you to survive. Your brain and your body remember situations that scare the daylights out of you. Your brain and your body try to talk you out of anything that makes you feel risky. And your brain given that it has been trained by situations in the past and given that you allow it to worry all the time, you have a habit of doing it, if you're not careful and you're not deliberate, your brain will default to scary crap. That doesn't mean you're broken. It means that your brain is thinking something that's broken and it's time for you to reset your mindset and pull it back.
You're not going to succeed on a large scale until you face the threshold of control. And once you face it, you'll face it again and again, but it'll become an old friend because you'll keep growing. What's the threshold of control? It's where you get to the edge where you feel like you just can't do it. Like if I put a dot in the middle of life and I go, this is a problem. And if you have a comfort zone that says, I, that's within the things I know how to deal with, to handle it. But if this is the circle of what you can deal with and the problem is way out here, it feels out of control, like I don't know what to do. So what we have to do is we have to learn to take where our comfort zone is and expand it. And the only way that happens, quite frankly, in most cases, is you face a real challenge. You know, what's going on in the material world is totally, you know, not the point. What matters is, do we have that vision of hope? in our mind? Do we see a possible future for us to step into that will make our lives better? And as soon as you take away that vision, we don't know what to do with ourselves. And, and we, we despair, essentially. Is how, how we need to constantly be constructing these dreams and these visions for ourselves and what happens when they're taken away. You need to visit it. Like, people hate working out. You're only going to visit working out maybe an hour a day. 23 other hours of the day, you're not in it. But how you become in shape is you must visit suffering, visit working out one hour a day. Visit suffering one hour a day. Visit your past failures one hour a day. The relationship with it is the answers are in there. They, they are in there. Within the suffering, go in there. And I call it the live autopsy change things, it transforms things, to make things better. When I said responsibility, you know, with great responsibility comes great power, the most important thing to be responsible for is how you feel. And we are sometimes, you know, we're thermometers, we react to the weather, if we're honest, the economy, to politics, we react to how people treat us sometimes, but is there a gap between how something, someone stimulates us and how we respond? Do we have choice? The difference between a thermometer and a thermostat, though, is a, thermo a thermometer reacts to the environment. What does the thermostat do, though? Yeah, it regulates, right? It helps manage. It sets a standard or a vision or a goal. And then what happens to the environment? It raises to be able to do that. Is there a difference? And so that's where we're going back to responsibility. When we're talking about being responsible, the ability to be able to respond is how you feel about things and also how you focus on things. Fear is adaptive. You run from the unknown run from challenges. So if you're living in survival, there's better chances of surviving mm -hmm. if you run from the unknown. And by the way, when you're living in survival at the infinite potentials in the quantum field, you'll select the worst case scenario in your mind and you'll begin to emotionally prepare yourself for the worst case scenario because you have better chances of surviving. If you are fascinated, then that's an area where you're gonna ask yourself one very simple question. Do I want to become the best in the world at that thing? The most important thing that passion will do for you, which is it's gonna pull you through boredom, it's gonna pull you through the hard times, and that's why it's really gotta be something that you just are prepared to become great at. Because when you're prepared to become great, there's just these insane moments of boredom, uh, repetition and all of that. And if you have this burgeoning passion coming out of that, that's what's going to give you the energy to get through it. Most people are waiting for their life to change, feel abundant, mm -hmm. feel whole. You know, that's the old model of cause and effect. You know, if you're living with emptiness, you're living with lack, you're living with pain, most people have been conditioned that something out there has to take away this emptiness or feeling inside of them. If you are able to become familiar with gratitude, become familiar with wholeness, become familiar with abundance, to become familiar with freedom, and you're able to generate those chemicals every single day, more than likely you would be walking around feeling like your future has already happened and you would no longer be looking for it to happen.